Let me tell you a story. A story I was told long ago. Of a great knight. A winged cavalryman that trailed across the skies. Bringing light and freedom to those under his shimmering wings. And certain doom to those who opposed him. We know not the name of this knight. But the name of his mighty steed. A shining old Nakoda. Named the Cherry Vodka. This is just one story. One that tumbled down the grapevine. And caught the ear of an old video editor. Some of it may be embellished or exaggerated, but make no mistake, it's as real and true as the great blue sky. We don't really know what happened to the guy, nor the cherry vodka, but this story always stuck in the back of my head, as did the Nakoda. To me, it was always a neat story about an otherwise unremarkable plane, more indicative of the PC community and how most tryhards on there really could get cleaned up by some flyboy in a mid-tier dogfighter. So the Nakoda faded from my memory, just another one of the smugglers run planes I rarely thought about in free mud lobbies outside that one awesome sourcing mission. That was until the Pyrone collab. Skimming through the comments on his announcement video, I came to a startling conclusion. Pyrom's fans are rather dense. But other than that, I noticed a particular comment. It was one of those I killed a bunch of tryhards one time story comments, nothing special, save for the guy mentioning the vehicle he used, the Nakoda. Weird. I kept scrolling, and then again, and again, I saw three comments now that were mentioning this plane in an otherwise not hugely viewed Pyrom video. And that was the weird part. Uh, nobody had even talked about this aircraft in the video. There wasn't a Nakoda free mode hero. It was nowhere to be seen, but people were bringing it up. Obviously, they weren't just inspired by something they saw on screen. This was coming from a personal place. So I was interested. I racked my pilot's encyclopedia, you know, my noodle, and nothing remarkable came to mind. I mean, one time I killed a red sparrow on stream with it. Save your pity for the 
another time, there was a Fleet Com member who pulled it out in a free mode war, which was rather based. And uh, I, I told my friend to buy it instead of a Rogue when he first got into the game. Sorry, Casey. Still, though, I was intrigued. Hell, maybe I'd make it my next aircraft video. So, I decided to take it for a spin. I had an old Nakoda sitting in the back of my hangar, the tinted product of an easy modded aircraft glitch a while back. I didn't even have upgrades on it. I threw them on, and up I went. I flew around some lobbies, shot down a few lasers, even on Mark II or three. And after that, all I found was... Nothing. Cool plane, but still, mid as fuck. I had not found anything that I didn't already know about the Nakoda. I just wanted to go back to my pyro. Something was missing. Not with the plane, but with me. See, the very, very few times I've met Nakoda pilots, they all had two things in common. For one, they were newer pilots, borderline beginners. They had no idea how outclassed they were when it came to most other planes and dogfights. And two, they didn't care. Nakoda pilots, despite their rarity, are probably the most likable people you'll ever meet. They just love their plane. I needed to learn to love it too, but my monkey lens of turn rate and PvP stats was killing my ability to truly appreciate the Nakoda. I needed to wash my eyes to get inspired. So I began my research. I needed to become a Nakoda enjoyer. I had to really appreciate the Nakoda for what it was, the P-51 Mustang. I don't think I need to give this plane much of an introduction, it's probably one of the most well-known World War II fighters of all time. I binged every Mustang-related movie I could, Empire of the Sun, Hearts War, even Red Tails. I also forgot how much Red Tails sucked, I, I probably shouldn't have rewatched it and just let myself think it was still a good movie. He's colored. Yeah, right. Hell if I'm joking, look! I haven't played War Thunder. Thank god I already had the Jake 26 otherwise that would have been a long ass grind. And I think War Thunder was the best place to take this, allowing me to get hands-on gameplay with a Mustang that was much more faithful to its real-life counterpart because it literally is the real-life Mustang, not just the Rockstar baller brand version of it. Using this aircraft really made me appreciate where it came from, really how it handled what was amazing about it, how accidentally well Rockstar had modeled a World War II aircraft, but more on that later. The point is, I started to really enjoy it. I wasn't just a Nakoda enjoyer. I was a Mustang enjoyer. I was loving it. I didn't even realize how much fun I was having till I realized I was on day 14 of my War Thunder daily unlockables, which had never happened before because I hate this game almost as much as I hate GTA, which is saying a lot. Seriously. And so, once I started hearing Merlin engines in my sleep and checking my rearview mirror for BF109s, I decided that maybe I had found the spark I really needed. Now, I think I was ready to hop back on GTA. I queued up my Mustang Enjoyer playlist, mostly filled with Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and yeah, you know ACDC was on there. And for the second time, I took to the skies. The difference hit me immediately. Firstly, the screen was harder to see because I was wearing aviators in my house, but other than that, I felt different, powerful. I was embracing the identity of a Mustang pilot. I made a more fitting rendition of my outfit. I made the Nakoda look more Mustang looking. Starlings became Jerry's, Weebs became Japs. I was just another blue job up in the sky and people seemed to respect that. Many times when I would fight somebody, I'd find a friend or two helping me out. I think propeller planes generally give off a more friendly vibe given that jet engines are usually followed by an explosive cannon rattle and a quick death. But props? I mean, whoever griefed a lobby in a Nakoda or a Rogue. I was a friend of the weak and an enemy to the cruel. Honestly, I don't think I've had as much fun in the past year with this game as I have cosplaying as an Army Air Force pilot in GTA's cesspool of a world. I mean, sure, using a goddamn de Havilland vampire against F-16s is hilarious, but the pyro is actually pretty good. Nakoda, on the other hand, is still an absolutely C-tier dogfighter. Unlike the Seabreeze, it isn't the curious love child of product of a passionate night between a luscious Tula and a very drunk laser. It's the laser's eternal quarrel with the pyro, culminating in one spicy night of vigorous hate sex. It handles like a Ford Explorer in a Walmart parking lot, and it's exactly as slow as the laser, aka the grandma in the scooter trying to escape the Ford Explorer. But it does retain the acceleration, an exceptionally important quality, not just for climb and dive ability, but for navigating hazardous environments like Granny tried to do. 
See, the ability to dogfight isn't as vital as one would think when it comes to free mode. The fine-tuned reflexes of a competitive laser pilot mean nothing when their tail is snapped off by an E-round. Free mode pilots are notorious for lacking dogfight ability because that isn't what keeps you alive. It's situational awareness, it's knowing the map, it's knowing your enemy's next move, not a turn fight. And when it comes to free mode, you can even navigate well with a mall talk if your game sense is good enough. Free mode comes down to tactics, not maneuverability, and every good tactic needs to be paired with wondrous weaponry. And that's where the real light shines through. The Nakoda has one of the best arsenals GTA can provide you. I'd know because it sports the same weaponry as my signature ride, that of course being the Pyro. See the Pyro, the Nakoda, and even the Molotov actually fill a similar combat role to the Mark II. Missile spamming platforms immune to missiles. Sure, they can as easily put out firepower as the blazing cannons of a laser or hydra, but these unassuming tubes can spam mid-tier tracking missiles in the heat of a dogfight, one-shotting any helicopter or unarmored ground vehicle and forcing both Mark II's and jets into evasive loops, allowing the Nakoda to close in for an easy gun skill. And if you watch my videos, you know how potent these guns can be. They're basically fully automatic heavy snipers, nothing to laugh at. Actually, if you're going to laugh at anything, it's the fact that the middle machine gun doesn't actually fire, meaning that they spread the fire rate between two of the 50 cal MGs per wing. And keeping with the theme of threes, the missiles fire in three per side before swapping wings. This can be really disorienting when it comes to free fires, given that most pilots are used to swapping their dominant wing after every shot, adjusting the angle. But once you acclimate to the change, it actually allows you to maintain the same line and get three shots per pass without having to adjust your flight path. And finally, let's not forget its final weapon, that prop. Oh boy, is it a wondrous thing. If you've seen my Seabreeze video, you know where I'm going with this. If you're looking for a Mark II killing plane, the Nakoda is a surprisingly good choice. Unlike the Seabreeze, the Nakoda's prop is center mounted, meaning it's much, much easier to sweep in for the cut. With its missiles and machine guns as well, you can make them play your game, forcing the little bastards to dance for you unless they want a rocket or rifle round up the wazoo. Trust me, they'll run, and that's when they experience what 1500 horsepower of English Fury can do to a human body. Personally, I think Rolls-Royce is missing a huge opportunity in the blender market, because with the propeller, the Nakoda has not only a well-rounded, but exceptionally fun arrangement of death-dealing murder toys. So, with all that, where does that leave us? Well, the Dakota isn't the best, but it's far from the worst. Its high acceleration and relatively good stability make it feel just right. It responds to your every touch and never takes a maneuver too far. Its low speed allows you to actually easily weave between buildings, ducking and dodging between each terrain piece and allowing you to wrap around to the tail of your opponent. It's not a starling, but it can dogfight if it needs to and a good pilot can make a hasty one sorry. Why should you use it? Well, because you love it. You're a World War II buff, you're a War Thunder nerd, or you're just looking for a challenge. You get to pseudo-energy fight with its ability to climb and dive. You get to chop up Mark II's with its Merlin-powered propeller. Since the skies of Italy and the swirling clouds over Berlin, there's not been a thing a team of Mustang pilots can't bring down. We should talk less about the Nakoda and more about the Nakoda pilot. A fearless ace, a regular comic book hero, patrolling the darkest skies in his blazing angel. I don't know what happened to the Cherry Vodka ace, but wherever he is, let's make him proud. Put on some Led Zeppelin, sip some Monster, and blast every goddamn jet you see, like it's 1945. And remember, it's always Mustang Monday somewhere. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'm glad you did, of course. If you want more Nakoda related content, my good friend Canuck is about to release a video where him, one of our friends, and even one of my squadron members took on a whole lobby in these planes, so you can see that on work. We also just held an event based on the plane in our PvP event server, Paradise Warfare GTA. If you want to see what amazing things people pulled off in this aircraft and participate in future events related to other things, the link is in the description. Uh, also, let me know what you thought of this video. As you can tell, I took a very different style with it, and I don't really know. You guys usually decide for me if a video is good or bad. You have a wonderful year, my friends, and I will see you next time. Peace out.